Hey, welcome back to my channel. So a couple of things have changed since I made my beginner interlocking video. Don't get me wrong, I still use a lot of the tips from that video and it's a really great place to go if you're looking for the foundations of interlocking because you're just getting started out. It's also a great place to go to see me do the three point rotation on my hair. However, I've had locks for over a year now and I've developed not only interlocking skills, but also arm strength to go along with the hours and hours of interlocking that I've had to do. Because interlocking is one of the highest maintenance and most high skill things that we do with our locks, it's important for me to come back and give you an update on the things that I've learned over this year plus. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. My seven tips to take your interlocking to the next level. All right, the first biggest change that I've made in my interlocking journey is I have gone from the three point rotation to the two point rotation. There's two main reasons for this. One is because, I mean, it still looks great, but the main reason is because it is easier and cleaner to do. This means that it is more efficient to be consistent with your interlocking process. So because there's fewer directions, it's less confusing, basically. I've also stepped up my yarn needle game. I used to use my seven centimeter yarn needle. And now because my locks have gotten a little fatter as they've gotten more mature, I have also started using my nine centimeter yarn needle. I got them both in the same pack, but they're just larger sizes of the same thing. Don't get me wrong, we love a thick juicy lock, but it just can't fit in the little skinny needle anymore. So let me go ahead and show you how, <laughs> let me go ahead and show you how I get some of these nice chonky boys into my nine centimeter yarn needle. All right, I'm trying to find a nice thick guy. There we go. So this one's really nice and thick. So what I do is I fold it over. So it's kind of like that. And then I pinch it. So that way the hairs are compacted, a little easier to get into the needle. And then I do a little gentle wiggling so I can kind of stuff it into the needle. Then I grab hold of the little part that's through and I just gently wiggle, gently wiggle keyword gently and there we have it so now i'll go ahead and show you my two point rotation so two points of course you've got four points like a compass and you want to use just two of these points i'm just showing you the options you'll just use two so you can go side to side this way and you can see i'm still pulling my needle all the way to the top of the new growth you can go front to back and that would be two. But then your other options, you can also go the other side. Getting a little closer here. There we go. You can go the other side. Or you can go back to front. And so using two of any of those four sides is how you do your two point rotation. Here I'm demonstrating the full two-point rotation interlocking process for one lock as I alternate between side to side and back to front. Now for some of my locks in the front, some of these smaller ones with finer hair, I still do use the three or four point rotation. So here is a skinny lock, seven centimeter yarn needle. That one of course goes in a lot easier because it's smaller. And I'll show you, so side to side, front to back, And there's the other side and you can also do back to front so with the two point rotation again you would just pick either front to back and one of the sides or the other way around the other side and back to front and again this is just because the hairs in the front the edges there are softer finer hair and i want to make sure they have a more compact a little bit 
tighter interlocking pattern to make sure that they don't escape. So you can already see that interlocking you can kind of do a little hybrid version of the pattern. So you don't have to just do three point or four point or two point. You can do a little bit of all of them, whatever works for each lock. This brings me to the next tip about interlocking that you need to know. Interlocking is not always quite so straightforward. This can come in the form of maybe using a hybrid version of your interlocking pattern, but it can also come with things like the direction you go in and when you go in that direction. So we all know that one of the most important things about interlocking is making sure you don't make holes in your locks. And we know that the way to not do that is to not go through the same hole twice. However, when you've got very small locks, micro locks, for example, the difference between the front and back direction or the side to side direction is only a couple of hairs. So it's very likely that you could think that you're going through front to back, but maybe you missed a hair or two or five or 10 and you actually went through a path that was more like your side to side. This will start having the bases of your locks be feeling like a little bit rolled, like logs, and that just means you did go through enough hairs in the same direction that it's starting to form a hole. But never fair. There's a way to fix this. This is also the same as how to fix a hole if you notice it later on. I got this skill from a video by Naps Are The New Black. I will put her video in the description below. Her content's really great. We also have a very similar amount of locks, which I love. So I'll put that down in the description so you can check it out as well. So say this is your lock. My hand's the lock, okay? This is your base. You've got something happening where the bases are a little rolled over. You know, they feel a little like little rolly tree trunks or whatever. So maybe you just went this way. You need to go this way you need to go across your the hole of your locks now. That will bring the hole together. Okay, this is a good example. The two legs of the locks are kind of rolled like that. See how I'm just making a teeny tiny little hole? And so I need to go through those sides again. It's kind of like when you're repairing a hole, it's the same idea, except you're trying to catch it kind of when it forms. You gotta be super careful that you go through each roll and not through the hole that they made. So I kind of try to weave the needle in there. Okay, so yeah, you can see here pretty clearly that I went through both sides of the lock and see the, how the hole's in the middle going the other direction now, and then I pull it through. The third next level interlocking tip that I learned is how often to interlock my locks. The answer is it depends on your hair. For me, it's going to be every four to four and a half weeks, and that's what I have realized is the best for my hair. My hair grows pretty fast, and... If I wait longer than that, I'm just doing a whole bunch of part cleanup and that's something that I don't really wanna do. I wanna make sure my parts stay pretty well established, especially because I didn't do them. And so I don't really want to attempt <laughs> to fix them in a large scale way. So I just basically would rather maintain them. Some of the reasons why people don't want to interlock very often is because they don't want to pull their locks too tight to over manipulate them to put too much stress on the roots. The way to make sure you don't do this if you're interlocking more often is to just not interlock your locks too tightly. Don't pull it through until it's like tight to your scalp, okay? We're not doing that. You wanna just make sure that it is tight enough, that it's clean, all the loose hair and new growth is in there, but there's maybe a teeny tiny little bit left, but you wanna leave that, right? You don't want it to be too tight. So yeah, four to four and a half weeks for interlocking so that my roots don't merge, but it depends on your hair. Next level interlocking tip number four, I know I said in my beginner interlocking video that the mirror can't save you, but sometimes it can. It still stands that the mirror cannot save you for knowing where the directions are in your lock. You do need to be able to have a familiarity to be able to feel that with your hands. However, to do part cleaning, to see what's going on generally in the back of your head, a mirror is super valuable. I'll show you the one that I use. So this is a mirror that clips onto my door. It uses this right here and then it faces the mirror that is in front of me. And then I use those two mirrors to make sure that I can see the back of my head and see what I'm doing. I still also need to have that familiarity with my locks, as I said, to be able to feel the directions that I'm going in. But good mirror, very valuable. The fifth tip is to be gentle while you're pulling your needles through your locks. This is one of those tips that sounds like, okay, maybe this is a little obvious, but it's something that's super important because Especially with micro locks, you don't want to break anything unnecessarily. When you pull your hair super taut, super tight like that, you might end up running your needle into a lock or running your needle into a hair and breaking it. 
You want to make sure your hairs are nice and pliable, so give them a little bit more leeway. Be gentle as you pull your needle through your lock, and this helps reduce breakage in your lock. Interlocking tip number six. So this is another one where it's kind of like as you gain skill, you can learn what it is you don't necessarily have to do anymore. And one of those things for me is that I don't have to use as many clips. I still use my metal duckbill clips to clip my hair. But as you may have seen in my beginner interlocking video, I use a lot of clips to pull the locks to the side one way, the locks to the side the other way, the locks above, the locks below. It was a lot of clips. And now I still use the clips, but just a little bit less. So I'll show you kind of what I do with my setup here. So I'll just use a ponytail. And I still use these nice little soft scrunchies. Say I'm working on this line of locks here. So that means that these ones back here will already be done because I go from bottom to the top. And so instead of having a clip here, 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 and here, I just have a general ponytail situation on the top and the bottom. I may do something like, say I'm working on this lock, I'll pull this lock to the side and clip it back. So that way I have more room around it. But generally I won't be using more than two clips at a time. And that's just something that kind of comes with the skill as you get more and more comfortable with interlocking and making sure your locks stay separated. And then my last tip, my seventh tip, is another one of those where it's kind of like as you get more comfortable you learn what you don't need to do anymore. When I was studying interlocking before I got started I noticed a lot of people talked about making sure that you end your lock in the direction you want it to lay. For example if you part your hair like this a lot you might want to make sure that this lock lays down this lock lays this way. But basically I don't really care about that anymore and here's why. By the time new growth starts coming in, by the time you start styling your hair, putting in ponytails, pulling your hair back, spraying in your moisturizing mist of, you know, water and tea tree oil, if you use what I use, then your locks are going to pretty much lay whichever direction. It's not going to be that much of a difference. And the benefit to not worrying about that is now I can do whatever is right for each individual lock. So if I'm going through my lock and... I pull my needle through and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's no more. That lock does not need any more tightening, but I just went the wrong direction for it to lay. It doesn't matter. I just don't worry about it. If I've got a situation where I feel like I'm potentially creating a hole or I need to fix a hole, I can make sure that I don't create that hole or I do fix that hole because I can go in whatever direction I need to make sure that I can get that fixed and not worry about the direction that the lock is going to lay. So it basically just opens up more flexibility to do what's right for each lock. So those are all my tips. I thought about rounding up to try to make it a nice round 10 tips, but those are the tips that I have. That's what I think you should know. And um, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like and subscribe. I do other videos on hair, micro locks specifically. And I've also got videos on giant cookies, which I really enjoy making. And I really would love for you to check that out if you like cookies as well. If you made it to this point in the video, thank you. You're awesome. And you should put this emoji in the comment section below. And it'll be kind of like, if you know, you know. You know? And that's pretty much all I've got for you today. I hope you have a great night, morning, evening, day, whatever it is where you are, and I'll see you around.